It's important that you go through this process whenever you have a major crash or do a major repair. This is critical in order to maintain controllability and achieve the maximum performance out of your Blade 450 3D. The first thing that we're going to do before we get started is that we're going to disconnect the motor from the speed controller. To do this, you need to pull any two wires that connect the two units. And then we're going to power up the helicopter. So what we're going to do now is set up the tail. To do this, the first thing we want to do is to set the gain on the transmitter to 50%. What this will do is essentially turn the gyro off so that it doesn't respond to rotations. We need to do this in order to center the tail servo and so that we can actually get the control arm as close to 90 degrees as possible. This is critical in getting proper throw and performance out of the, the tail of the helicopter. So right now I have the gain to 50%, I have the servo centered, and I have the control arm as close to 90 degrees as possible. Now that I have that situated, the next thing I'm going to do is attach the control linkage to the control arm. Simply snap that into place. With the tail servo still being loose on the tail boom, what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide the tail servo forward and back on the tail boom until the pitch slider is roughly halfway on the tail shaft. This is necessary in order to make sure that you have equal travel left and right for the rudder. Now that I have that positioned properly, I'm going to use my Phillips head screwdriver and I'm going to secure the tail servo in place. The next thing I'm going to do is look down the boom of the helicopter in order to make sure that the control rod is as straight as possible from the control arm to the tail control lever. If it is not, simply adjust the push rod guide such that the control rod is actually straight. Once you have achieved that, the next thing you'll want to do is move the rudder control stick left and right and you want to make sure that the servo moves in the proper direction. When giving a right input, the tail blade should move towards this direction. And when giving a left input, they should move towards this direction. If the control moves in the opposite direction, what you'll need to do is go into the servo reverse menu in your transmitter and reverse the rudder channel. Now that we have the servo situated, what we want to do now is take your small flathead screwdriver and give full right rudder and you want to take the flathead screwdriver and adjust the travel pot until you get maximum travel on the servo without binding. You'll know that the servo is binding when you begin to hear it buzz and the pitch slider no longer moves. So right before it starts binding that's when you should stop. Then you check left direction to make sure you have adequate travel and once you have that you are actually complete. Alright, to make sure that the gyro operates in a proper direction what you want to do is increase your gain on the transmitter. For this part of setup it really doesn't matter what your gain is set at you just need the gyro to be active. So now that the gyro is active what we're going to do is take note of which way the tail blades rotate when giving a right input. And now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to rotate the helicopter counterclockwise. And the tail blade should move in the same direction. As you can see, when rotating the helicopter counterclockwise, the blades move as if I'm giving a right input. If the blades do not move in the proper direction, what you'll need to do is take your flathead screwdriver and flip the direction switch on the gyro. Now we're going to flip the transmitter into stunt mode. Now on the DX6i, simply put the flight mode switch into position one. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to move the collective stick to the center position. Now that we are at center stick, the next thing we want to do is take note of the three cyclic servos on the Blade 450 3D. There's a servo here, 
a servo here, and a servo here. Now during the setup process, it's critical that you do not move the collective stick because everything is based on the stick being at the center position and the blades being at zero degrees of pitch. Now to achieve this, the first thing we're going to do is adjust the servos individually. It's critical that all the servo control arms are in the proper position. This is necessary to ensure that you have proper control and minimize interaction with your inputs. If this is not done properly, what can happen is that when you give a pure elevator input, you might get some interaction along the roll axis. So it's very critical that you take your time in doing this next few steps. So on the Blade 453D, there are two servos in the rear, two cyclic servos, one here and the other is here. And for these two servos, it's actually quite easy to adjust. What you're going to do, what you're trying to do actually, is get the control arm to be perfectly level with the main axis of the helicopter. Now, on the front servo, the elevator servo, instead of looking at the control arm, what you're going to look at is the actual output arm to the swash plate. What you want to do is make sure that this output arm is level along with the main axis of the helicopter. Now what you're going to do, you're going to adjust each servo individually. To do this, you're going to use the sub-trim menu of your transmitter. Now, depending on what your transmitter is, you may have to look in the manual to see how to do this particular step. Once you have achieved this, the next thing you're going to do is adjust the three links from the servos to the swash plate. Now, what you're trying to do here in this step is to make sure that the swash plate is perfectly level as well as the washout mixing arms. Again, this is critical in making sure that you don't have any interaction and that you achieve the maximum performance and controllability out of your Blade 453D. Once you have adjusted the swash plate links, the next thing you're going to do is adjust the main blade links. There are two of them. It's one here, and if you rotate the helicopter, it's another here. Now what you're trying to achieve here is that you want to adjust the link such that you have zero pitch on both blades. All right. Now to measure this, I suggest that you use the E-Flight blade pitch gauge. All right. Now any pitch gauge will do as long as it fits on the blades. Simply follow the instructions for your particular pitch gauge and measure the pitches accordingly. The next thing you want to do once you have zero pitch, next thing you want to do is that you want to move the collective stick up until you have full positive pitch. Take your pitch gauge again and measure the pitches on both blades. For the normal profile, you should have 10 degrees of positive pitch. Now, if you do not have 10 degrees of positive pitch, either too much or too little, what you'll need to do is go into your transmitter's swash mix menu, all right? Now, for your particular transmitter, you may need to go, you may need to refer to the manual to find out how to get into this menu. But once you're, into the, once you're in this menu, adjust the pitch value accordingly to, so that you achieve 10 degrees of positive pitch on both blades. You should not see any difference between pitch and you shouldn't have to adjust the blades individually. Okay? Now, now that you've confirmed that you have 10 degrees of pitch, the next thing you want to do is move the collective stick all the way down. And you're going to repeat the same process, but now you're going to be measuring negative 10 degrees of pitch. Now that you have your negative 10 degrees of pitch, the next thing you're going to do is return the stick to center stick. And what we're going to do now is measure the cyclic deflection. To measure cyclic deflection, what you want to do is that you want to line the blades up perpendicular to the main axis of the helicopter. Now, for this step, it's actually a good idea to have an extra set of, extra pair of hands to help you. But it can be done by yourself if you're a little patient and clever. So what you want to do here is that you want to hold the cyclic stick and give full forward or backward cyclic input. Now what you're going to do here is use your pitch gauge and measure the pitch on the blades. All right? For the normal profile, you should have roughly 5 degrees of deflection. If you do not, if you have too much or too little, once again, go into your transmitter swash mix menu and adjust the elevator value accordingly to get more or less deflection. Now that value that you have for the elevator, simply plug in that value for your aileron and you should have the same deflection on your aileron. 
Now, just for good measure, it doesn't help, it doesn't hurt to check to make sure that you have the same aileron deflection. The way you do this, similar to elevator, that you align the blades, this time parallel to the main axis of the helicopter. And instead of giving a forward or backward input, you give a left or right input and you measure the pitch as you would before. If for any reason your controls are reversed, meaning forward is backwards or backwards is forward and left is right and right is left or negative is positive and positive is negative, do not reverse the directions of the servos. Considering that this is a CCPM mixing helicopter, reversing an individual servo will not reverse the direction of the swash plate. What you need to do again is go into the swash mix menu. Now depending on your transmitter you'll need to switch the direction of these particular values. On the DX6i, if for any reason one of your controls is reversed, simply change that number to its opposite. For example, if you have minus 60 degrees on elevator and it's going in reverse, simply change it to positive 60 degrees and that will solve your problem. Now that you have all your controls operating in the correct fashion, do one more once over over the entire helicopter. Check all of your controls. Make sure they move in the proper direction, including your tail. Check the gyro direction as stated in the previous video. Check over the helicopter. Make sure there are no loose parts. Make sure everything's tight. Build some confidence in the machine. And then finally, disconnect your battery, reconnect the motor connections, cycle the transmitter power, it also might be a good idea to get a fresh battery, and put your canopy on and go fly.